Watching Southern Bell speak Sunday. Dang, look at him. I just love them. Now I know why bodybuilders get their muscles. Alright. So, I want to get into this book today 31 Prayers for My Future Husband. I'm going to just get into the first chapter. I talked about this, but I don't know if I got into um, the contents of it. So, within this, there's challenges. There's seven challenges throughout the book. But, each section is like a uh, different topic. So, in the introduction, we're speaking on his heart. We pray for his heart. Then his family, his words, protecting his mind, understanding his purpose, his confidence in you, staying out of debt. That's a good one. Making wise decisions, his health, his integrity, his resisting temptation. That's a huge one. A love like Christ. That's big for me. Uh, being a good steward. That's awesome. Good company, saying no to point. Mm. Dying to self, working hard, striving for purity, a heart of compassion, victory in Christ, becoming a leader, relinquishing worries, living with understanding, the fruit of the Spirit, maturing Him, humility, uh, maturing Him. <laughs> I like the relationship. Baby. Let's just say I thought I was shopping at preschool. No shade. Uh, humility, preparing his heart, intimacy with God, our future wedding, our future marriage, our future oneness. Wow. Vows, resources. I love that uh, she separated the wedding, the marriage, and the oneness. Because you can get to the wedding and not complete have a, a marriage. You can get to the marriage and not be one in that marriage. So I love that that's separated. So those are the chapters, but in each chapter, um, there's a challenge for every couple of chapters. So I'm in the first one. Haven't gotten to the first challenge yet. I just read the first chapter of his part. I'm going to read you prayer for his heart and then when they give you the prayer they give you sorry a section to personalize it but um and then i want to go back and speak on something that was in the introduction dear lord i pray for my future husband i pray for his heart May you continue to mature him and reveal yourself to him in mighty ways. I pray that he would love you passionately. May you and him have an incredibly deep relationship. I pray he is willing to open his heart to you. I pray he comes to you in prayer and is vulnerable about the things he is facing in his life. I pray he relies on you for help and guidance. Fill him with your wisdom. I pray a blessing over his heart. I also pray for protection. Please remove any temptation or evil that is attempting to make him fall or get hurt or torn from you. Guard his heart and cover him with your peace. If there are any situations or circumstances that cause him pain, I pray that you would heal him and make his heart whole. I pray my future husband will have a strong understanding of who you are and how you are moving in his life. I pray his heart is full of discernment and is sensitive to your Holy Spirit. I pray that he is willing to address his emotions and does not put them away, push them away. Soften his heart so that he is always willing to yield to you in humbleness. 
I also pray that he would embrace all that you have for him and that he is passionate to serve you joyfully. May you continue to express intimacy with him. I pray he loves you with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his mind, and all of his strength. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, basically your task here is to, um, for each prayer that they give you, they give you some blank pages to take the prayer that they've given and personalize it, maybe add some things um, to this book is interchangeable. It's supposed to be to pray for the future husband that you haven't met yet, but it can be for you know the future husband that you know you're already going to have, or the husband that you have right now. You know, um, so you can really personalize it that way with names and situations, or you can add some things that you wish they would have said in regards to your future husband's heart that you would want to be in here. Um. So each prayer has that section in it. But, I wanted to pull something out that was in the introduction. So, um, the introduction, they're talking about how this book came about. So this book, particular book, 31 Prayers for My Future Husband, was written by Anna, um, <laughs> Jennifer Smith. But her husband is Aaron Smith. He wrote 31 Prayers for My Future Wife. Um, really good. My best friend inspired me to um, read this book because he's reading the um, Prayers for a Future Wife. And so I was like, oh, they have a girl version, so I wanted to read it. And this is something that they put together. Together, they have blogs and things like that. But when they met, she, um, before they met, excuse me, she had been praying for her future husband. She didn't know who that was going to be. She didn't have any prospects, but she knew that she wanted to have a future husband. So she was praying for her future husband, and um, he was praying for his future wife. And it was really cute because they saved their prayers, and like they didn't know they were praying for each other. You know, they saved their prayers. And they were able to share that they both did that um, before they met. So I thought that, that was really awesome. And there were some things in her prayers that were situational for him that um, actually, you know, turned around. You know, I mean, maybe say like you're praying for your husband's heart and some things that, you know, he may deal with. But you're just, you know, thinking off the top of your head of some situations that might come about. Imagine... Um, y'all come together and he's like, you know, I really was going through this and, and God really worked on my heart. And you're like, wait a minute, you know what I mean? And then he gives you a situation and you say, you know, you were praying for certain situations that your husband may, whoever it might be, may go through. And that's exactly what they were going through and, you know, the, their heart was worked on. Um, so it was situational like that. I thought that was really um, beautiful. But... One thing that uh, she stated in the introduction after she's talking about that is that um, she felt like the God was telling her, I can't trust you with someone else's heart until you trust me with yours. So she focused on her relationship with God and, you know, began to trust him. That she also still prayed for her future husband, but she began to focus more on her relationship with God. And that's where I'm at, you know, because, like, um, I know I've talked a lot about how um, different things have transpired in my life. And sometimes I feel like that, you know, I don't hear God the way that other people do. And I, that's just, like, been a common theme with me this past couple of weeks. And I keep getting confirmation in different ways. And, um, you know, some people are struggling, wondering why God hasn't sent them their spouse. But they keep having these bouts of anger with God. They keep, you know, their relationship with God isn't quite where it's supposed to be. And they're feeling like they're lonely and they're waiting for God to send them their person. And God's kind of waiting for them to get in a relationship with Him before He can send them a relationship. Because if they don't understand the love of Christ and the love of God, then they can't love somebody in that way. Um, or learn how to, to discern when, you know, the love is, is, is parallel to his, um, to be loved in the right way, you know. So that uh, spoke to me, you know, that she said that, you know, I can't, God is saying to her, 
you know, I can't trust you with someone else's heart if you won't trust me with yours. Um, so she began to work on her relationship with God. So I just wanted to encourage you to, you know, um, if you're wondering why God hasn't sent your spouse and, and you're, you know, getting a little impatient, um, take a moment to give yourself a little heart check, a little spirit check. How is your relationship with God? You know, um, or is there some things that, you know, you haven't crossed off on the list of things that he wants you to get done? Are you fervently seeking him? Because, you know, for me, and and I always say this on my channel, if you're not, you know, religious, that's fine. Um, but, you know, the universe or whatever you believe in will send you who's right for you when you're on the right path. So, even if you're a person that doesn't believe in God, you believe in the universe or whatever and things naturally occur. What you put out is what you get back. So if you put out positivity, you should get a positive person. But if you're putting out negativity, you're putting out bad vibes or whatever you want to call them, you know what I mean? That's what you attract. So that's what, you know what I mean? If that's what you feel in your heart or you're missing something or you're, you know what I mean? Even if you're not putting out bad vibes and you're a good person but you're insecure on the inside, you're going to get somebody that's going to be able to prey on that. You know what I mean? So you have to work on you in order to find the person that is for you. You know what I mean? So, if you want a godly man, then you need to seek God. Like, if I want a godly man and I want a husband that, you know, is going to treat me like God would treat me, then I need to know how God would treat me. You know what I mean? Um, if I want a relationship that's going to be the foundation, uh, you know, of my life, that's going to, you know, that foundation needs to be built around God if I want a godly relationship. So, I need to seek God. And I might find somebody that's also seeking God, you know what I mean, in his presence, you know, so that we might find each other in that space. So I should really focus on what God wants me to do um, instead of, you know, sitting around doing what I want to do and waiting for God to send me somebody in where I'm at. And I need to go seek God and, he, you know, find somebody there um, or allow somebody to find me there um, rather than going in the world and trying to find somebody there but hoping that, you know, he'll come to, back to God. Like, it doesn't really make sense. And, and i saying it doesn't make sense because I'm speaking from experience. It doesn't make sense because it doesn't work. Um, but I just really liked uh, what I've read so far. And I think that um, I'll have more to bring you guys about this book. Um, I, you know, am liking doing books. I know that I started this out, uh, I know where I wanted this to go, but it didn't actually go where I wanted it to go. Um, I really wanted this to be like an advice column, um, kind of like the strawberry letters that, you know, people would write in and I would give advice on that. Um, I've done some current event topics and, you know, I may go back to the regular Southern Bell Speak Sundays, but, um, you know, this might be another Southern Bell book club or something like that. Um, you know, so... If you're watching this, let me know what you think about this kind of being like a Southern Bells book club. Um, and if you would like to give some suggestions on books, you know, um, I love to read. I love books. I'm always reading anyway, you know, so um, I like to pull things from books. Um, yeah, any personal development books, any spiritual books, any Christian books, you know, it could be um, positive books, whatever. Um, so let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I am Southern Bell from the city. You are watching hashtag Southern Bell Speaks Sunday. Maybe possibly Southern Bell Book Club. Alright guys, catch you next Sunday.